these are typical government owned schools managed schools affiliated schools more than 1 million such schools exist 114 million children they go to these schools to learn to play improve their cognitive skills build personalities and character i went back to my school couple of years back and this is what i saw this is what i saw long long back and i saw a couple of years back and it really impacted me really disturbed me for quite a few months 75% of schools in india are owned and managed by governments it's not private sector 110 plus million children with the aspiration they go to these schools this is where the future of our country is situated let me change tracks completely change tracks and tell you a different part of this story this is delhi couple of years back 28 children died very sad incident it occurred couple of children were injured and one person died do you know that every day 60 such buses loaded with children they die 365 days year or year after year this particular incident never gets our attention it just escapes 50% of stunted children in the world are in india what is stunting it's about low height compared to age and it has implications in terms of learning it has implications in terms of longevity and most of these children are indians now why these things happen one of the primordial reason for this mortality that i talked about 60 buses da children every day dying and stunting as an illustration is because of poor access to water sanitation and hygiene practices and facilities they don't have the so called 1 million plus schools they are deprived of these basic facilities leading to mortality and morbidity just to dramatize the fact but it's a fact 1000 plus children die every day because of single incident of diarrhea there's only one aspect there are many other aspects and which is directly related to poor quality water and sanitation high school because a child spends maximum amount of time in school and they go there with aspiration environment is bad they fall sick and they miss out school they miss out learning especially girls in certain age category they can't even attend to school during the period of menstruation because the toilets have no doors there's a issue of dignity and most importantly schools are basically facilities for creation of agents of change if we can impact a child at the school level they go back to community they go back to their families and influence the families to have a toilet the earlier speaker said 50% of the world's population are defecating openly because if you can influence a school they can influence the family and the community so school is very very important this is the greatest entry point to bring in revolution and human development having said that importance of wash in school let me just give you a quick ground reality 40% of our schools they do not even have toilets or toilets are dysfunctional now what is equally important is this is a you know government statistics some researchers have put out data and it shows very very dramatic situation almost 46% of schools have no access to drinking water 35% don't even have toilets and worst situation is the 
Schools where girls are going, 44% of them don't even have access to toilet. And we expect them to go steady and come back. To reinforce the point further, if you look at the statewide analysis, the toilet to children ratio, some states have a toilet for 200 children. So imagine we have only three toilets for this group. You would not be attending the program. You would be standing in the queue. Let's assume only three toilets for these 500 people. And that's what exactly happens in these schools. A very important aspect is lack of access to hand washing facilities. Leave alone soap. Imagine our children, they go to washroom, they come back and eat food. Would you allow? That's exactly what happens in this so-called million plus schools. They go to washrooms, they go to toilets, they don't have access to hand washing facility, they don't have access to soap, and they come back and have their meal. There's a midday meal scheme, some of you may know about it. And we expect health outcome improvements when we don't have this improvement. Let me just show you some pictures to illustrate the point. Toilets are built, but they're not functional. This is a very interesting picture where we were doing some field work in one of the districts, Telangana state, where there's cooking operation to the left under the midday meal scheme. To the right, there's a toilet, but the pan is missing. So one smart elect picked up the chair, made a hole and made it as a pan. Small investment made the toilets dysfunctional. Could have saved so many mortality and morbidity cases. This is a very interesting picture. In fact, two weeks back, I went to a school again, a squared school, not a girl's school. The tap is somewhere here. The toilet is about 300 feet away. So the girl has to carry the lota, and she feels very uncomfortable to walk with a lota. Because there are boys around, other students are around. So there's an issue of sensitivity. Just to illustrate, this is a girl's toilet. Door went missing. Hand washing, taps went missing. This is a wood bungalow. This is a toilet, actually. We can't expect a primary school child to visit this facility. They would be scared. There's no lighting, there's no ventilation. This is from the field. Investments were made in the past. Very good. But this toilet can't be used by a child. This is adult's toilet. Child will feel uncomfortable to use this toilet. India is one of the few countries where right to education was introduced, like right to information. And under right to education, every child is entitled for both boys and girls separate toilet facilities. And fortunately, our prime minister talked about Swachh Vidyala and the Swachh Bharat mission. And he has given a call to the corporates to spend 2% of the net profit towards sanitation, particularly wash in schools. This is a very, very positive, compelling story that's happening on the ground right now. Hundreds and thousands of toilets were built. Assets are created. New facilities are coming up. But if we don't use these toilets, if we don't construct them properly, if we don't make them functional, and if you don't use them, in six months' time, these lakhs of toilets that we are building will become liabilities. They will not be assets, like the pictures that we have seen. So what do we need to do? We need to speak about it through every channel. And we want all of you to be a part of this story. It should actually be headlines. Don't you think so? We need to use social media. We need to use multiple channels of communication. We need to communicate among ourselves. And we need to articulate the importance of this future generation. It's in our hands. Toilets have to be child friendly. We need to bring in our creativity. Very simple. But we need to make it work. There are different age groups. There are children with special needs. Boys, girls. Toilet can't be uniform. Look at the very interesting 
A dysfunctional hand washing facility was made functional by adding two steps. A dysfunctional urinal was made functional by lowering the pot. Small changes. A school has different age groups. Why do you need to have a uniform? And I, when I go to some of the theatres, in my you know, early days, I used to lift my chi child up to urinate because he cannot reach. And half the time he's urinating on the floor. So we need to be a little more sensitive towards different categories of children. And this is what we are trying to promote through advocacy, through research, through training, making it functional. Functionality is the key. Girls of particular age group wouldn't like to walk into the washroom when boys are floating around. In fact, I'll tell you a very small incident. In one of the toilets, there's no hook. So they have to put a dupatta on the door. And all the time, these girls lose dupatta because the boys come and take out the dupatta from outside. Very insensitivity. All it takes is having a hook in the washroom. So here, they provided different access. So change is happening. This, this is not theory. This is actually some of the district collectors, I think uh, one of the collectors is he, here. People like him are actually making difference. Very important aspect in enhancing health is promoting what is called group hand washing. Hand washing with soap is the biggest idea that we can promote in improving the quality of health. In fact, researchers have proved beyond doubt that 40 to 45 percent of diarrheal morbidity can be reduced by simple hand washing with soap before eating meals. This is what is innovation, small innovation, small change. Instead of providing taps all over, here you can see kids coming, facing each other, learning from each other. That's what is group hand washing peer learning, eye contact. This is some more examples where UNICEF is working across different districts. Even when there is water scarcity, innovations are actually helping them to promote hand washing. The question is, how do you achieve scale? These are all isolated innovations, very good ideas being taken up by number of agencies, individuals. But how do you achieve scale? What is the cost? What, is the, what are the ideas that we need to introduce to achieve scale? This is one of the interesting example where in one of the urban school where the senior boys and girls are teaching the younger ones how to do hand washing. So they are introducing behavior change through peer learning. Now how do you introduce scale? How do you achieve the scale? We typically think that it's going to cost a lot of money. Actually not. The cost of installing a hand washing unit per child one time is less than 100 rupees. The cost of hand washing is 10 pesa per child per day. And cost of maintenance of schools is typically is about 15 rupees, 10 to 15 rupees per child per month. Not a big investment. All of us can make a difference in this case. Critical aspect in this is behavior change. Having made these investments, it's equally important to introduce behavior change. You ask any child, in fact, I went to one of the uh, districts in Madurai, where Tamil is an official language. I asked them to sing a song. They sang Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. I asked them, multiplication table, absolutely good. But you ask them about hygiene and health, they don't know. English, Tamil medium song, but they know Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but they don't know the basic aspects of hygiene. So we need to, all of us collectively can bring in behavior change, not only at the children level, but also at the teachers, at community, I think at all of, at every level including politicians. What is needed is a collective action. Collective action involving all of us. What is needed, those two steps that all of us have to take. I think those two steps are missing.
and i think i see that these two steps are going to be made by all of us in order to make this facility functional save hundreds and thousands of children by making those two steps thank you very much